Hi there, I'm Bob Burridge. Welcome to Finding the Focus in Your Painting. Four video lessons on Strathmore oil paper. Can you imagine that? Remember lesson number one, just to review, it was setting up your studio. And then before every painting, before I even start a painting, I write down the four C's before I make the painting. Today's lesson, number two, light source and introduction to the Rembrandt lighting style, which I happen to like. Those are the two, two that I happen to like, and they fall under broad light or a spotlight. Let's get started. Broad light, spotlight, got it? You know, I get to jury an awful lot of shows, and some of the paintings, they look so flat. There's just, and I asked them, where's your light source? And they look at me and they said, light source? And I said, how do you know where to put the shadow? And they look at me and they say, shadows? So this is all about finding the focus in your painting. And one of the things that will help you is a strong light source. Here are two light sources that I seem to favor an awful lot. The broad light, the more natural light. You know, you open up the garage door and everything's nice and bright. And as you get deeper into the room, it gets darker, more natural. This one is more theatrical. Dark room, put a spotlight on it. Now this part is pretty interesting. The light goes right on the ball. Let's say we're lighting the ball. But then it doesn't stop. It goes back and lights the wall behind the ball. So what you get is dark against light, dark against light. Very dramatic. This is more softer and more natural lighting. Broad beam light, we call this. This is more spotlight. Two dramatic, beautiful lights. But make sure you make that determination before you even begin. So this is, might be a little easier to visualize it. Imagine a ball in the big pitch black room. Shine a big light on it. It's gonna be nice and light over here and darker over here. If this was in a pitch black room, shine the light on it and the effect will be dark room, light around here, dark on this side of the ball, light doesn't go around the side, look at the moon, and then it continues on and lights the wall over there. So it's dramatic, it's beautiful, so we get dark against light, dark against light. You'll hear me say that forever. All right, let's get started. So this is what we call the gray scale. When color comes out of the tube or out of the jar, it's going to be the darkest it's ever going to be. That particular color is going to be the darkest that color is going to be. We give it a number 10. Now we add some thinner to it. It goes a little lighter, it goes down to nine or eight, more thinner to it, water, turpentine. It goes all the way down to zero where it has no more pigment. The reason you wanna know about that on the gray scale so you always start off a painting, most of you know this, a mid-tone, a five. I've already have it down here. My mid-tone is already here, ready to go. Somewhere around a five. I'm halfway done. I have my oil paints, my black, my white oil paint. I have my oil medium, which actually is a galkid, which helps to dry up the oil quickly. And I have my thinner right here, ready to go. Here we go, I'm gonna get started. Wet my brush a little bit. I'm halfway done. I just have to put the ball sitting in the room. There's the ball sitting in the room, sitting on a table. Now this is the broad beam light. Lots of light coming across here. So let's put some light in here. This is oil painting, so short choppy strokes, see? Short, choppy strokes. Don't erase the gray. You let that peek through. There we go, right? And I'm and now I'm gonna put it on the ball, on the on the table in the rest of the room because that's where the light's coming from. Big broad beam light. There we go. Now the dark side. Clean my brush. Get some black in here. Here we go. Black oil. Let's start on this side. This is where we're pretending no light hits it. Because it's 
far, far away. There we go. In fact, it's so dark over here, you rarely see the shadow. I'm going to do a little in, out, in, out, so it starts to gray down a little bit. Short, choppy strokes, short, choppy strokes, just like this. More white, more of a natural. But show the brush strokes. My gosh, it's an oil painting. Show people how much fun it is to be a painter. Not how complicated it is. Show them how much fun you're having. Look at that. So you're creating a gradation across the room, so to speak. So that's, I'll make the table a little bit lighter. That way you can see a little bit of the shadow. Just a little bit. Remember, it's supposed to be really, 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 really dark. So you can see a little bit of the shadow in this particular one, even though it's nice and dark. Very dramatic. All right, let's switch over here to the spotlight. I love this one because it's so dramatic. We'll start off with the white. To a ball. There we go. Sitting on a table again. Now we're coming in with that flashlight. There we go. More white. More white. There we go. There we go. Nice and white. And while I have white on my brush, I may as well put it somewhere else. This back wall. Here we go. Now let's bring in the black. Remember the room is black, nice and dark. This is that dr dramatic lighting. Also let's put a nice shadow underneath there so it anchors it down. Now we start fine tuning it. Kind of like I'm painting the moon. See, what we have here is dark against light, dark against light. That's that strong spotlight. I'm gonna lighten up the table a little bit. There we go. Short, choppy strokes. And there we have it. Light all over here floods the whole room. As it goes deeper, it gets darker in here. And this is the more dramatic one. Dark against light, dark against light. I wanted to show you how to find the focus using just a good strong light source. Hold on, I have some more things to say. So, using a transparent oil paint, Let's go on top of this pair that I've already painted. I have the blacks and whites down, the light, good strong light source, but now this is completely dried. Oh boy. Because it's transparent, you don't lose the underpainting. Don't lose it. It's gonna be so rich. And while it's still white, uh, wet, Start wiping some of that. There's your highlight. Come back in, here's more white paint. Get some highlights in here. Whoa! Look at this guy. Wow. And if you want to, put a little bit of white on top of this even. It gives it a beautiful feeling, I think. We can see the stain and a little bit of the white. That's how I do my oil paintings. Get the darks and lights down first, Put transparent paint on top of it. Now let me show you another cool thing, which is the Rembrandt style lighting. And it's the same light source, but coming from a different direction. You know, many years ago, I was looking at a Rembrandt painting, one of those self portraits, and I couldn't figure out why it was so dramatic. He didn't have much color. And then I realized it was the lighting, one focus, the lighting usually on the face, right? And just earth tones, black and white. And how did he do it? Dramatic lighting. It's gonna come in handy later on when you start doing figures. 
just like the ball and the pear. Dark against light, dark against light. It's gonna come in handy when you do many figures. See, pretty simple lighting, light to dark, and the background just the opposite, light to dark this way. Later on, you can start adding color to really kick it up, but still always maintaining that lights and darks and a gradated background. You know, I, I love practicing these pieces. I do a little of these every day. Just to see all these different characters. I can do a negative shape painting. So I already have my Galkid in the black oil paint. So I know it's gonna dry pretty quickly, that's nice. And remember, this is that Rembrandt thing. They didn't have a whole lot of lights in those days. <laughs> they relied on natural lights. Now let's get the bottom part. There we go. Looks like he has his hands in his pockets. So we will do that. Negative shape painting. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Now, let me get the bottom part. This is all white. Kind of gray, actually. Yeah. It all gradates. And this goes up this way. So like that. It gradates up. doesn't it? There we go. Oh, yeah. So, oh, let me do the bottom part, too. I forgot that part. There we go. Hey. And need to anchor it a little bit. Let's put a shadow. There we go. There we go. Let's figure out a guy black and white so dark to light dark to light just the opposite Rembrandt lighting let's do it with a toned color all right so we did that guy with a little bit of color in here let's do a female or something that resembles one there we go still doing the Rembrandt lighting only this time with a little bit of color a nice long neck there we go nice shot. It's a female, so I'm giving her narrower shoulders. There you go. And more of that galkit in here. And more of the hips. circus ladies. <laughs> this is an acrobat. There we go. Flying all over the place. <laughs> and uh, let's get some light down there. 
add some more yellow in here. Now I'm gonna start to paint. Look at this. Adding yellow oil paint into this. And I'm gonna give her a little bit of color. Just a very little bit of color. You don't need a whole lot of color. This is pretty, oh, this is nice. Circus uniform. <laughs> there we go. Uh, add, add a little bit of dark color over here. That's mystery. And one more section done here. Keep it light. There we go. Make it like a circus ring. There we go. Nice bright light. And that's how I handle my Rembrandt dark to light, dark to light this way too. Let's see what else we can do. And now we're gonna do a painting using the Rembrandt lighting and those four C's. Starting off again with that wonderful Strathmore oil painting paper. This time it's a little bit larger. I'm doing the 12 by 12 inch one. Put down on my table, remember those four C's. What's the concept? What's the composition? What's the color? And make a commitment. So for this painting, the concept is, I'm going to be doing a family. Composition, well, a family, vertical, all standing. Color, I'm gonna keep it very neutral, very earthy, kind of those colors, you know, not a lot of bright colors. I've already made that idea, uh, you know, and I'm making a commitment to that. Make a commitment, don't keep changing your mind through the whole painting process. So I know it's going to be family, vertical, neutral, earth tone, and it'll be the Rembrandt lighting. Here we go. Again, the Strathmore oil painting paper. I put all kinds of colors out here. Always wet my brush. And you want to tone the paper. Let's tone the paper. All over. All over. So you want to have the mid-tone. I love changing it all over the place. It looks so great. This is when painting gets to be like way too much fun. There we go. I'm scrumbling right now. It's called scrumbling. Just pushing it all over. I could have done it with a paper towel too. But I like the brush marks. And I love the action of painting. There we go. Now, let's get a family in here. All right, so I'm gonna sketch it all out. Remember, these are just sketches. Give me ideas. So I do wanna have a figure here. With an attitude. <laughs> so I'm working out the composition vertical. Said it was family, so let's get a family over here. There we go. Narrow shoulders. Sketching it out like this. Standing right there. I just love this. Yeah. I just keep painting until it looks good. This is called paint sketching. Using good materials, the good oil painting papers, good acrylic, I mean oil paints. I paint uh, the same way whether I'm doing acrylics 
or the oils. Wet, fast, juicy, that kind of stuff. And let's have, it's a family, so have <laughs> Little goofball over here, kid. There we go. Let's put another kid in there. <laughs> the big brother. There we go. Now that's the composition. Now I'm going to make it a little bit more dramatic. Start adding some color. Again, I add uh, Galkid to the oil. It helps to speed up the, the drying time in here. Ooh. And this is a little bit of that negative shape painting too. Oh, man. So it looks like a, a family of performers at a circus. So that's the story at this point. And they're backstage, getting ready to go on. I'm giving it with color, I'm doing the dark light, dark light thing. And over in here, let's, let's make the bottom half a little bit darker. There we go. Their costumes. Even the kids are performers. It's the circus family. There we go. The brothers. And let's make it dark down here. See, we still have that dark to light, dark to light. Her light. I use lots of white. You notice I have many piles of white over here. That way I always have a clean one somewhere. I use a lot of white. I, I like the buttery quality to it. There we go. So we still have the dark to light, dark to light. I'm going to make it just a little bit darker. Get back to those neutrals. And some of that red kind of peeks around. And that's what gives it its excitement, I think. You see all those other colors peeking around. See, it's a lot more lively. Still being very aware of the dark and light, playing with different colors now. And keeping it neutral, I'm toning it down. Making her more petite. Negative shape painting. Oh, I love that stuff. some of that brightness peek through. That's what gives it, I, I think, that je ne sais quoi, that excitement. And I'm still working always, always back and forth with not only color, but the light against dark, light against dark. So I have my figures, my Rembrandt lighting, very dramatic, very 
theatrical. Scrape in some lines. In the circus, there's always lots of lines. <laughs> trapezes. There's a trapeze. We'll do another trapeze. There we go. We are in the circus. And it's a subject matter that always excites me. I still love the circus. So any chance I have it, I'll, I'll paint it. So a brief review. That was lesson two. All right. All about light source. I know you got a lot about light source. And introducing the Rembrandt style lighting. You've heard me say that so many times. So the next lesson, number three, is all about me painting flower still lives. Alrighty. So I'm Bob Burridge. Thanks for watching. And that was finding the focus in your painting.